Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Progress America Unfiltered. And today, like many days, we will be talking about the extreme right and the Republicans' hypocrisy as it comes to judicial activism. So we covered the hypocrisy of the right over and over again on this channel, on our TikTok, on our Instagram. And you know what? It just seems like one of those evergreen topics. But today we will be talking about specifically judicial activism as it relates to abortion rights, as it relates to the abortion pill, Myth of Chris Stone, that Craig is going to cover today, um, that a Texas Trump judge recently set his grubby little hands on. And then we will also be talking about LGBT rights and how um, the Trump legacy and these judges, these extreme right judges across the nation are targeting the rights that so many of us hold dear in this country. And so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Craig, who's going to talk to us about this abortion pill and why this safe, effective, well-tested, well-studied and secure pill is the latest attack, latest to be attacked from the Republican Party and the extreme right that are often so married in this country. Craig, what is up with this abortion pill? What is going on? Why is this the latest target of the Republicans? So basically what we see here with judicia, judicial activism and sort of like the hypocrisy. So basically why they claim this is uh, the Warren Court is what it's named for is where Roe v. Wade was actually first legalized. And they basically said that there's no explicit right in the Constitution that suggests that there's a right to privacy, although there's a bunch of amendments that suggest that without the right to privacy, they wouldn't be able to exist. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to anybody who's read a book. But... They then themselves have judges who, through Trump's abuse of the nominating process and Republican complicity, nominated a bunch of judges who were unqualified. The American Bar Association called them unqualified, and this is what we're getting. We're getting national effect uh, decisions by federal judges attacking, essentially, the FDA's approval process for the drug um, that happened 23 years ago. And so essentially what he tried to do and what the fifth, the although really extreme Fifth Circuit Court, even they couldn't stomach it, uh, also tried to do is basically say that the uh, FDA improperly in substituting their own science for the nation sciences approved changes to this drug and how it is distributed. Now, to be clear, this drug is a life saving drug. It protects women from um, pregnancies gone bad, where the fetus is no longer viable and they're suffering effects from preeclampsia or other um, horrible uh, things that can happen that basically threaten the life of the woman. And so it is, although it is used for um, near-term abortions, it is also a life-saving drug for many out there and is a long history of being safe and effective. And so <clears throat> what they're basically allowed to do, because our nation's founders didn't really um, do a whole lot of thinking on how to set up the courts. They basically said that there needs to be a Supreme Court and said Congress should figure out the rest in which Congress in its infinite wisdom, uh, of which we can all celebrate from left to right. We all hate for good reasons. We all we can all celebrate that as Americans. We all hate Congress equally um, because they tend to make relatively short-sighted, narcissistic decisions that only benefit themselves. Um, and so you have a court system that has this ability to inject a great amount of chaos into our system because it was formed by a series of compromises, which allowed us to view humans as three fifths of a whole, which all seems very dumb because it is. Um, and so that's their hypocrisy. And I, I don't even know if we should focus on the hypocrisy because I think Democrats have in some ways done it ourselves and with our judicial, judicial activism. And we only like it when it goes our way. I think it's dangerous to play that game. I think it's dangerous to play the both sides game. I think we need fundamental judicial reform. I think we need sh uh, sharp uh, restrictions and enforcement of who is able to be subject to jurisdiction where like that's like it's not even certain that like this judge has jurisdiction to make this decision when the plaintiffs aren't impacted negatively by this drug at all. None of them take it or prescribe it. So there's not there's a question of why these people even have standing. And Congress has the right and did set these laws in the first place. So all of these laws that govern what they can and cannot do are so vague and loose because they haven't been updated that you can get chaos actors like this just ruining 
the national healthcare system because they felt like it on a Friday from a small town courthouse in Texas. Yeah, I think that topic of standing is really important. Like as we cover this idea of judicial activism, and often these people that are funded by these far right interest groups that are targeting um, these very specific issues, be it abortion rights, be it LGBT rights, as we're going to talk about with Natalie, um, these people really do not personally feel the impacts of the things that they are trying to do. They're pushing an ideology in front of these courts that does not directly impact the lives that they are living. They are using the funding that comes from these far right interest groups. They're using this like continued approach of saying, you know what, we are already favored by the legal system. We already contain so much privilege within us that we know that this Trump legal system is going to support us and our extremist beliefs. So I think that's what we're seeing really play out here time and time again is like, what the hell is your standing? Like, where is the standing? I want like, I want a shirt that says that. Where is the standing? Where is the standing of these people to think that this is their fight to pick? Where is this idea that they just need to really impact their, um, impact the lives of so many people because they feel like it? I mean, I feel like winning the lottery, that doesn't mean I'm going to go do it. I don't know. Natalie, so we talked yeah. a little bit about um, abortion rights. I want to talk to you now about the LGBT cases that we are seeing in front of the courts in this land. And um, kind of for background here, so we saw the Biden administration pass some protections for LGBT people throughout the country. It is now being held up by a Trump appointed judge. Common thread there. Natalie, what's up with it? Well, I think what you're saying about where is your standing is completely relevant here. A lot of Christian straight people have an obsession with queer culture that needs to be called into question because what is wrong with people just existing as they are? Why are people so attacked and threatened by the existence and the thriving of the trans and gay community? This is what's happening in Texas. It's happening across the country. The queer community is under attack because people don't know how to simply accept and respect life when even when it is not directly harming them. The queer community is just existing and that's a problem for people. So this is being played out in the court system. It's being played out in day-to-day encounters. And we have to do something about the way we are picking these judges, the way that such conservative and um, dangerous people can be in such positions of power to really influence the livelihoods again of so many people whose lived experience will never be the same of these of the ones making decisions about their lives it's ridiculous that's exactly right natalie and i think i also want to pass it back to craig too to tie in some of the things that you were saying craig about the need for reform in this effort so as natalie was saying these extremists are finding their ways onto our courts and they are setting the sights on so many things that really matter to people in this country really marginalized groups But as you were mentioning, judicial activism is something that um, is does occur across the board, Republican and Democratic judges or progressive conservative left or far right judges do take on um, this role. But what do you think that means when we see it impact issues that are so direct, like targeting a specific group? I mean, this seems like such a thread for the far right. I'm curious what you think about that, though. Is this like what is this impact of judicial activism? What do those reform act- efforts look like? Well, this is the problem with like asymmetric warfare using the same set of rules. Um, so like <clears throat> basically you can, in a democracy, we have to let everybody have a chance to rule if they have majority support. Part of the point is like having um, a, a majority rule or legitimacy of things. And so I like to think about this from the veil of ignorance, a philosopher no one cares about, um, thought of a useful thought experiment. I like this one because it really sort of like highlights how we should think about how we create new rules around this that kind of protects us all from essentially overreach. And that is, you have to imagine how you create the rules as if you knew nothing about your life. Like you didn't know if you're going to be white. You didn't know if you're going to be black. You didn't know if you're going to be rich. You didn't know if you're poor, if you're going to be intelligent, if not, you were going to inherit a ton of money or not. And when you make rules from that perspective, 
it is an attempt to essentially come up with the most efficient system to ensure justice, which is what I believe we're all striving for. Um, so I like to think about it that way. I don't have the answer because I'm not a lawyer and I'm not smart enough to pretend that I do have it. So this kind of reminds me of this conversation I had with one of our producers, Andrea, who we're going to get on the show one of these days. We'll see when. Um, yes, we will, Ray. Type, yes, know we in the will. Chat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But Andrea and I were talking and she was saying, you know, it felt like a few years ago we were seeing like in Target and every kind of major store, like big advertisements, no matter where you were in the country, mind you, of like just, you know, like in makeup brands and clothing of like this idea of like genderness or genderless, excuse me, androgynous approaches to just kind of life, to fashion, to makeup, to how people present themselves. And it really felt like a moment of progress in our society. But now, could you all imagine that happening in the current state of like the anti-drag and the anti-trans kind of movement that we're seeing from these far-right extremists? It became something that was just like maybe more popularized a few years ago to now being really the target, really at the forefront of this kind of fight that the far right is waging. So kind of with that idea of like, um, like marginalized communities, like we've really progressed a lot. And I think that's exactly right. Like gay marriage, as Craig mentioned, did not always, was not always popular. I think it's also really important to mention how far or how easily it can be for us to fall back on the progress that we make. And if we're not consistent in our approaches to staying on top of the ball, consistently pushing the ball forward as led by our trans and our gay communities in this example, it will fall back and it will be pushed back by people that have nothing but bad intentions for harming this community. So they can continue, mind you, to fundraise off of them, to harm them, to um, police them, all of these things. Um, and I just saw an interesting, oh yeah, Natalie. I mean, that's why Marianne Kaba says freedom is a constant struggle and it's something we constantly have to maintain. And that's why we need to call people out when they're interfering with the natural process of appointing judges. I'm thinking of that Senator Dianne Feinstein, what she's doing right now, she's, she hasn't been in the session for I don't know, is it a month? She's She's been AWOL, not AWOL, but she's been MIA. And this is stopping Biden from getting judges appointed. So it also called, it also fought, the responsibility also falls on our elected officials to step up to the plate and do what's necessary in order to progress our democracy, even when it's not, again, what you're saying before, Craig, within their narcissistic short-term goals. So this episode, we really covered a lot of the judicial activism that is going on in our country. We covered the far right, the extremists that have found their way under Donald Trump to the Supreme Court. And you know what? In closing, I think this is a great opportunity to remember that as people say that Trump is so dumb, Trump was ineffective, Trump was like a clown in office. It's important to remember that we are still feeling the ramifications of him being in office through these court appointed judges. Uh, or these judges appointed to courts across our country. And it's really important that we keep our sights on that as we have upcoming elections in the years ahead. And we recognize that the consequences of these elected officials in office is not always immediate. It's a slow burn, as they like to say, that we will feel for years to come, that people will be feeling the harm of for generations to come. And with that, I thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Natalie for joining today. And thank you all for watching Progress America Unfiltered. Make sure to comment, tell us what you thought, like, share, subscribe, all of that. And as Craig said, peace out. Bye, everybody.